Next, on AM 1480 WLEA, the Newsmaker Show. Here's Brian O'Neill. 22 degrees at 834. We have now on our live line with us Corning Republican Congressman Tom Reed. Congressman, thank you for joining us. No, oh, thanks for having me, Brian. Hope everybody's safe and sound out there with the weather today. It sounds like kids have a day off of school, so hopefully they get to enjoy that and be safe. Yes, uh, thank you for that. Well, Congressman, congratulations on getting the uh, Republican of the Year Award. Tell us, how did things go Friday night at the Lincoln Day Dinner? Well, I, I, that was uh, very much uh, a surprise and appreciated. I appreciate the Hornell City Republican uh, Committee's uh, award uh, to us, but most importantly, I appreciate their hard work. I mean, those, uh, that committee has uh, come leaps and bounds. Uh, John Buckley uh, reinvigorated the committee years ago, and Paul's doing a great job as their chairman leading uh, the Republican Committee. So I was just uh, very much surprised, humbled, and appreciated that. And it was nice to have my wife and my son there with me who surprised me for it. And and I'll just tell you, I, I just really appreciate it. And we don't do it for the awards, but uh, it is nice when uh, you receive something like that. Well, Congressman, uh, can we ask you what you talked about at the dinner? You know, the, the message that I wanted to, to share is that, you know, we need to get engaged. Uh, that uh, I've been watching across the country uh, a lot of folks uh, disengaging, and especially in New York, where people are making the decision to leave the state. And I know it's a tough state to do business in. I know it's a tough state to try to find an opportunity for your, your children to be able to stay here and have a job. But we can't give up on it. Uh, we need to bring the Republican ideas. We need to bring the Republican ideas to uh, the debate, take on this extremism of the left that is coming out of our state capitol, and lead on the issue. And I'll, I'll tell you, I think when we resonate best is when we speak from our hearts as to what we believe and challenge this nonsense, this uh, extremism uh, that attacks us day in and day out. And it's not what we are as Republicans. We believe in people. Uh, they believe in government. Uh, we believe in the power of work, and they believe in the power of government spending in, in regards to welfare benefits and other things and to take care of people. I really trust people to be able to control their lives, and that's the, the message I brought that on Friday is we need to come together, welcome people into our party, and say, you know what, we, we believe we have the best ideas to bring people uh, into the future in a positive way. You had some uh, town halls over, was it in Tompkins County on uh, Saturday, Congressman? We did. Uh, we were in Owego in Tioga County and then up in Groton in uh, Tompkins. And I uh, just tell you, we continue to do the town halls because in order to represent people, you have to listen to people. And, you know, sometimes, you know, even in uh, these town halls, they were not as contentious as ones we've had in the past. But there were some uh, moments uh, where people just uh, got down into uh, was uh, screaming, uh, name calling, uh, attacking me for being a, a racist, and you know that's just offensive. And and uh, to even you know try to have a conversation with them is important. But we'll stand there. We'll we'll take uh, those attacks because we know who we are. We know what we're fighting for, and uh, we'll stand firm and then try to find common ground, even with the most extreme among us, as to their agenda, and make sure that we're always putting people first rather than getting into name-calling, rhetoric, uh, political theater fights that so often have do uh, dominated our political scene today. And uh, I'm on Ithaca.com right now, and it says uh, that uh, the most contentious point was uh, uh, people uh, angry on uh, border issues, asking why are people being treated like criminals, why are they being detained when they're just trying to... Uh, seek asylum oh what did how did you answer that well it says you answered that's not true a lot of folks illegally are, are here illegally crossing the border violating our border rules most are not seeking asylum is uh, what uh, the reporter said that you said uh, uh, yes exactly I mean you know most folks are, are coming to America uh, not for asylum purposes but to enjoy the American dream and and most folks coming are are God-loving, uh, God-fearing individuals that uh, want to make their lives and their children's lives a little better by experiencing the American land of opportunity. And uh, so they were, uh, you know, there was this mindset uh, that everyone was uh, fleeing terror, fleeing uh, injustice. And I just wanted to set the record straight that most folks just want to come to America like our forefathers came and our grandparents came uh, because of the dream and the philosophy and the freedom that America represents as the greatest country that's ever existed on the face of the earth. And then there was this utopic 
uh, kind of idealistic, and I, and I get it, but it, it was a message that they were saying that, you know, all these folks that are coming, there's no bad people uh, that are trying to get to America to do Americans harm. And, and as I said to them, I said, there are threats. There are security issues here. There are gang members. There's drug traffickers. There's human traffickers. There are people that have an idealistic war against America trying to come through our ports of entry and our border. And, uh, you know, they don't want to recognize that threat. They don't want to deal with that threat because they have some type of utopic, uh, idealistic uh, mindset that everyone just wants to come to America and sing Kumbaya. I will just tell you, those threats are real. And my mission and my commitment uh, in America, as a representative in America, is to keep our fellow Americans safe at all costs. That's the number one priority. And so, you know, I just tried to bring a dose of reality uh, back to the conversation and say, look, if we want, we can agree, we want a border that functions, but we want a border that keeps us safe and secure as a country. Uh, Congressman, uh, some of the people uh, who make these complaints uh, about uh, border protection are implying that no one is allowed in because of uh, rules on illegal immigration. They, they're arguing, well, people are coming in from south of the border as if no one is allowed in legally from these countries. But that's not the case, is it? No, that's absolutely not the case. Obviously, we have a rich legacy of diversity in America. And, and the, even today, uh, we do the best we can at the border in regards to have a lawful process that people can come to America legally. But it, I would agree, that's where the common ground could be found is that we know we need to fix the border, we need to f fix the, the, the functioning of the border processing, and we need to do it in a way that is consistent with the 21st uh, uh, century technology that is out there. And uh, that, is, that is clearly uh, where there's improvement needed, and that's where the common ground should be found. And, we sh and most members, Democrat and Republican that I talk to, understand that and are willing to support it. That's why, you know, the $5.7 billion deal that the president was looking for was clearly along those lines. And if we didn't have the political extremism uh, on the left right now and the, uh, the is emblematic by the word wall, we would have been able to get it done and make significant improvements on this, on this uh, front. Talking to Congressman Tom Reed, we got onto the topic of uh, border security and immigration because uh, that was brought up uh, Saturday in uh, Tompkins County at one of his town halls. Uh, the congressman was uh, on Friday at the uh, Hornell Lincoln Day dinner. Congressman, any thoughts on uh, Venezuela? I see from Bloomberg and Drudge this morning it says that Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said Sunday more needs to be done about Venezuela and he's not ruling out military action but Pompeo it says downplayed the setbacks on Saturday saying that history can be slow and unpredictable. No one predicted in 1989 that the uh, East German uh, wall would come down, Pompeo said on CNN, and he's confident that the Venezuelan people will ensure that Maduro's days are numbered. Did you have any thoughts on Venezuela, Congressman Reed? Yeah, no, obviously it's a very troublesome situation, and it's a situation we as Americans, as the a democratic socialist uh, movement takes over the Democratic Party uh, in, in Washington, and that extremism is coming to life. You know, Venezuela is an example yet again that socialism does not work, and it all it does is it weakens people and the and the people's ability to control their own future because big government ultimately takes away the rights of people and puts a burden on people uh, that uh, is unsustainable, and and that's what you're seeing in Venezuela. You're seeing the collapse of another socialistic state. Uh, from within, and that is why I hope Maduro, through the people, uh, will be a thing of yesterday's uh, government in Venezuela, and that what you will have is a peaceful regime based on democratic principles uh, where more freedom is brought to people rather than more government controlling, because once government has that power, once government has that control, uh, I guarantee you, you, you will see results uh, in America similar to what you see in Venezuela. Talking to Congressman Tom Reed this morning live on Newsmakers Show on this uh, day where uh, a lot of the area has been hit by uh, wind very badly. Some power outages, a lot of school closings. Uh, Congressman Reed, uh, you're a member of the, um, the uh, what, what's the name of that caucus? I want to call it the Peacemakers Caucus. What It's slipping my mind at the moment. No, we lead the uh, Problem Solvers Caucus. The Problem Solvers Caucus, that's right. Now, I'm wondering, in your discussions with the Problem Solvers Caucus, um, 
You know, the AOC, uh, Congresswoman Alexandria Asasio cortez comes up a lot. Uh, wondering, is she a member? And uh, maybe yes, maybe no. But how does how do the problem solvers react to uh, uh, Asasio cortez and her many statements about, you know, the Green Deal? Yeah, no, I mean, uh, AOC or Cortez is not a member, uh, nor do I see in her activity uh, a commitment uh, to really trying to reach across the aisle, understand uh, other people's points of view. It's uh, essentially uh, what I sense, in my in my opinion, uh, is a uh, a leader there uh, that says it's her way or the highway, uh, so to so to speak. And uh, that future that she articulates of democratic socialism that you know government is going to take care of all the needs of Americans, be it uh, free health care, free college education, uh, free uh, uh, whatever. Uh, it is based on this uh, fundamental. I appreciate the utopic. I, I appreciate the uh, the vision of trying to get to that state, but the reality of the world is such that 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 nothing is free. And uh, I just watch these debates, and I see them always talk about, well, we have free college and free health care. The top one percent will pay their fair share. And and if you do the math, I mean, it, they're not going to they're not going to tax the one percent. They're going to have to tax uh, the top ninety percent. Uh, that means every American, every hardworking American, uh, because that's where the money is. That's where the money to cover these programs would be. And so it's it's really misleading, in my opinion, for uh, the articulation of the, that democratic socialist movement saying that uh, this will be free because we're just going to have a small group of Americans paying the bill. And that's just not accurate. The math just does not add up. And and, and we've all been there. You know, when I was a kid, when I was uh, in college, and, and even in my heart at times, I still have an idealistic bent, a utopic uh, type of bent. But we do this through empowering people, not empowering government. And, you know, this kind of philosophy is not what the Problem Solvers Caucus is about. It's about trying to find that common ground, recognizing more of a reality situation on the ground rather than a utopic uh, uh, and uh, idealistic-based type of operation. Now, reading from uh, Rick Miller's article here on the Only End Times Herald, Congressman Tom Reed said he does not agree with President Trump declaring a national emergency to build a wall with Mexico, but Reed won't support a Democrat resolution aimed at blocking the president on this. Uh, where do the problem solvers uh, caucus? Where do they stand on the issue of the wall? Well, you know, uh, we've obviously put together a proposal over the last year to. Uh, embrace uh, border security in a reasonable, common-sense type of way and couple it with giving relief to the dreamers and uh, the million, million and a half folks that uh, the future here uh, in America is uh, unknown and taking care of them in a way without uh, a, a, the issue of citizenship uh, being the reward, but uh, uh, the alternative, you know, lawful permanent status. Uh, but I do want to clarify something that uh, when you reference Rick's article, you know, I recognize uh, that the emergency situation at the uh, border does exist. And one of the things I recognize is that the president has tremendous amount of authority that Congress has delegated to the executive branch for years. And as I complained about Obama's executive action and overreach, uh, that's the complaint uh, I have with the president today, is that, you know, the president's wiser course, in my opinion, would not have been to declare a national emergency, but to uh, go through Congress and force Congress to do its job and hold those congressional leaders accountable that are now just being be just uh, beholden to that extreme left agenda, and these guys cannot stand up to it because they're not uh, strong enough of congressional leaders or leaders themselves, and Nancy Pelosi or Chuck Schumer, to say enough is enough of this childish game that's being played over the word wall and the political theater that is there. And so what what I am more interested in doing is taking that authority back to Congress and making Congress a co-equal branch, just like our founding fathers envisioned, where Congress would have to do its job, not just delegate it to the president, and the president use ex emergency actions to uh, continue to expand the presidential authority over matters that, you know, President Trump's not going to be president, as I told the folks back when Obama was president, he's not going to be president forever, and the more power we give to the executive branch, uh, the more... Uh, that w Congress loses its oversight, checks and balance type of role, and uh, that's a problem long term for the future of the country's security. Going to take a quick break. By the way, I just got an email from uh, Kenneth Arega, Central uh, Superintendent Chad Groff says Kenneth Arega is uh, calling off the two-hour delay. Kenneth Arega Central is now closed. 
for today. Going to take a quick break. We'll be back in just a moment with Congressman Tom Reed. Do you need physical therapy for an injury or illness? It's here. St. James Hospital has a brand new PT clinic. With state-of-the-art therapy and fitness equipment, we can address all your PT needs, such as joint and back pain, work and sports injuries, concussions, vertigo, Parkinson's and stroke care, arthritis and fibromyalgia, and much more. Best of all, you'll get personalized one-on-one care from one of our experienced, friendly team. Same day and walk-in appointments are available. Call 385-3790 or visit stjames.urmc.edu. While the high wind warning uh, is in effect uh, this morning, actually it's now up until about 10 a.m., so it's going to be uh, short-lived here. The next couple of hours, strong gusty winds, Brian. Winds can gust over 40, 50 miles an hour, even up to 55 miles an hour in a few spots. So that's the main thing this morning, the wind. And we do have some snow out there, though, albeit light snow, but it's scattered in nature. And that's not going to amount to not, nothing more than just a coating to an inch. Temperatures will be holding in the 20s. Now, by tonight, it's not as windy. It's breezy, mostly cloudy, and down to about 10 to 15 overnight. And then cold and dry after that for Tuesday, partly sunny. Temperatures up around 20, mostly cloudy and 10 to 4 for tomorrow night and light snow or snow showers possible Wednesday Brian high temperature in the upper 20s okay thank you meteorologist Gary Best on back again with uh, coining Republican Congressman Tom Reed who called in live this morning uh, Congressman Reed the Mueller report uh, expected to come out soon your thoughts uh, first and foremost so glad that we're coming to the end of this investigation we're multi years into it millions of dollars of taxpayer money spent and uh, it's time uh, to have the conclusions vetted, uh, brought to light in the public domain as much as possible. I, I am a proponent of getting as much of this report out there publicly as feasible and possible and err on the side of public disclosure rather than privacy. But uh, I, I think, uh, and I'm hopeful, uh, as Joe Kennedy, uh, my Democratic friend on the other side of the aisle, you know, I'm hopeful uh, that it comes to a conclusion, as he said, you know, shows that there was no... Uh, issue of integrity or collusion in regards to the Russian uh, investigation, and that we can move on as a country and move on from the 2016 election and focus on what's impacting people, our fellow American citizens, on a day-to-day basis and try to solve their problems rather than what can often happen in D.C., which is to become all about presidential political elections and that political theater and that political drive to be in power for the sake of having power uh, becomes the number one mission. And that's just so wrong. That is not what we are there in Washington, D.C. It is to use uh, our positions to better the government, to better people's lives as best as we possibly can, and find that common ground where we're proud Republicans, proud Democrats, and we institute policies that are going to benefit people in a way that protect America's way of life, America's way of governance, and uh, a reasonable approach, in my opinion, to solving these issues rather than take us on courses of extremism uh, now on the left, but we've seen it before on the right, and where where that extremism rears its head, I will always be a voice to push back on it. Congressman Reed, reading off your Twitter page, you wrote, we fought for tax reform so you can keep more money in your pocket for your family, which is where it should be. You posted that, I believe, yesterday? Yeah, because uh, there, there's this misinformation, and, uh, and it's, you know, again, part of the political operation, political theater of Washington, D.C., of the uh, left just trying to attack anything that's positive. And when we did tax cuts, and what we did with the tax bill uh, is to reduce people's tax burdens, and now they're trying to equate, uh, on the Democratic side, you know, the, the issue of tax refunds, and because, you know, folks may be giving less money uh, back in uh, this uh, year, this April, uh, because they uh, have not had to pay as much taxes, that somehow that shows that the people's taxes went up. When that's just a falsehood. Uh, the, the the limit, the level of someone's tax refund, uh, really uh, does not uh, indicate uh, that they have an increased tax liability because they got less of a refund. Remember how taxes work, Brian. You know, you pay your taxes throughout the year, and what we wanted to do is to keep your money uh, in your pocket rather than have you send it to Washington, D.C. for 12 months, and then you get it back from the government uh, when you essentially loan the government 12 months' worth of a loan at interest-free uh, amount, and then they're, they're kind enough to give you your money back uh, 12 months later. That's not the way it's supposed to work. You earn that money. You, we, we, we reduced your tax liability. We kept that money in your pocket because it's yours. 
And that's the mindset of the left that I think they're trying to equate with this tax refund situation is that, no, the left says this money that you earned is government money, and therefore they're going to take it from you as long as possible. And Congressman Domery, down in the last couple of minutes, um, I wanted to ask you, uh, you, you put out a couple of tweets critical of Governor Cuomo. One says, rather than misdirect this fight on the salt cap, Governor Cuomo should focus on reining in the out-of-control spending and lower taxes across the board for hardworking New Yorkers. You also wrote that Cuomo is trying to protect his rich donor base as he pushes to repeal the cap on salt, state and local deductions. Absolutely. And, and that is the hypocrisy that I just find amazing and appalling from the left right now on this SALT issue, the state and local tax deduction. You know, we fought hard to keep that, a, to get a compromised position of $10,000 of a deduction being available to people. That's paid, you know, when you, when you put the numbers together and you actually look at what we're talking about, by removing the $10,000 state and local tax deduction, that is for very wealthy individuals. You know, it's wealthy individuals that pay more than $10,000 of state and local taxes. Hardworking New Yorkers under ten thousand dollars are are just that the hardworking middle class, and that's what we fought to protect by getting that compromise position in the state and local tax situation of ten thousand dollars. And so to repeal that, it is hypocritical, uh, in my opinion, uh, that I have been told from the left that the one percent need to pay their fair share. That one percent is who should be uh, targeted, and now you're having a whole Democratic Party buy this. Uh, misleading conclusion that you got to remove the state and local tax uh, cap in order to protect those hardworking uh, taxpayers, when in essence what they're doing is protecting that 1% uh, that is going to be the ones paying significantly more than $10,000 in state and local tax cut. And I'm not going to let them get away with it uh, because uh, I believe in people. I believe in people understanding and, and understanding what's going on here once they're given the information. And so what I would say to the governor and to the people in, in the state capitol is, you know what, you should go to the root cause of this problem. What are causing taxes at the state and local level to be $10,000 or more? Uh, what, what is the spending policy out of Albany uh, that is causing Albany having to raise taxes uh, at twenty, thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year uh, for their state and local tax burdens in, in New York State? We lead the nation in the tax burden that we put on our people, and then somehow you want to blame the weather as to why people are leaving? No. It is exactly the policies out of our state capital of extremism on the left that are raising these spending levels to the point where tax burdens are now driving people out here by droves. And that's where we're not going to let them get away with it, and we're going to call it out, and we're going to stand up uh, to this uh, uh, policy as emblematic by the governor's office and say enough is enough. And I know no one likes to stand up to the governor in Albany, but I'll tell you, I'm, I'm sure the hell going to take that fight on because it's, it's, it's the right thing to do for the future of our state. With that, we have to leave it. Congressman Tom Reed, thank you so much for joining us. All right. Thanks, Brian. And uh, I hope everybody stays safe today in these, uh, in these weather conditions. Thank you, Congressman Tom Reed.